I'm John Rose, Chief Technology Officer and Chief AI Officer of Dell Technologies. Uh, you know, today I want to talk to you a little bit about the high-level AI journey at Dell. And it turns out this journey is probably very similar to yours and it definitely is repeatable. Our journey really included two very important questions. The first was, what are we actually trying to do with AI? What problem are we solving? What impact do we expect? And the second question we had to answer is, well, given that once we figure out what we're trying to do, how are we going to do it? Now, those sound like very high-level topics, but it turns out that, you know, there's an approach that can actually get you to be able to answer those questions. And if you answer them, then your AI strategy makes a lot of sense. For the what are you trying to do question, it all starts with a very simple question. What makes you special? What is it about your company that if it improved with AI, it would actually let you win? At Dell, it was very simple. We have the largest secure supply chain in the world. We have the largest enterprise sales force in the world. We have one of the largest engineering capabilities in the world. And we have one of the largest global services capabilities in the world. We immediately realized that focusing on those would make us win in a material way. The second level of that discussion, though, was, well, those are not AI problems. Those are just domains. AI problems in the enterprise are actually applying AI to make a process better. So what process in each of those is actually going to move the needle? And so we did a process diagnostic. To give you an example in the selling side, we realized that our salespeople are fantastic when they're in front of customers, but they spend 40% of their time preparing to be in front of customers. And most of that time is spent finding content, organizing content. And so the AI solution that we had to put in place to solve was not about an automated salesperson, it was about making that content preparation as automated as possible to free up that time so our, customer, our salespeople can spend more time with customers. And then at that point, once we understood what process we were going after, we could then focus on what tools and technology we would use to solve it. That's the, what do you need to know, what, what are you trying to accomplish side of the equation? But even if I knew that I wanted to make my salespeople more effective by making their content better, how am I going to do it? And there we went through a similar set of discussions. Um, the first was that we realized that there is no AI without data. It was incredibly important to understand that if you want to solve a sales content problem, you better understand what content they're dealing with. We made sure that the actual data that was necessary to make that AI outcome happen was in a state and was available in a way that the AI systems could use them effectively. The second thing that we realized is that we didn't want to treat this as a snowflake. There are hundreds of AI use cases that we could pursue, and solving this particular sales one, if it resulted in a bespoke infrastructure that only did that one thing, very quickly we would have hundreds of bespoke snowflakes, and that would be terrible. So we spent time looking at not just that one use case, but 360 use cases, and what we discovered was a pattern, that within those use cases, there aren't a lot of different ways to do AI. And in fact, we discovered that there were really only five capabilities that we needed to do all of them. And so, the bottom line is, we had a data foundation that was in place. We now knew that we didn't have to build 100 AI tools. We just had to put that foundational set of capabilities in place to address these AI use cases. And then the last piece of our discussion was, well, do I build this or do I buy it? A year ago, we built it all. And today, we don't do that anymore because there are now sufficient off-the-shelf tools that the vast majority of the AI componentry, inclusive of the models, the developer frameworks, the engines, can actually be consumed as a standardized piece of technology from a provider. Now, that is a very good thing because if you consume technology and use it and compose it as opposed to build it and make it your own, there's no technical debt. You have an ecosystem to support you. You have faster velocity. Fundamentally, we have line of sight and have already put into production most of these use cases touching our services organization, our supply chain, and our engineering organizations. And we're about to enable our sales force, like 20,000 sellers, with things like generative search. But we've done it from a coherent approach of having a strategy and an architecture so that we don't end up with hundreds of AI infrastructures and pure chaos. Anyway, our journey had one goal. It was to enable Dell to be one of the most effective and efficient users of AI and get dramatic impact to our business. We are largely achieving that. But the secondary goal was to do that in a way that was repeatable and structured, both in terms of deciding what to do and executing those things into production. I feel like we're in a pretty good place. We have a long journey in front of us because this is going to go on for 20 years. But where we sit today is both of those goals have been met. We think they are very replicable. Hopefully, they are useful to you. And they're things that you can emulate or utilize to maybe accelerate your journey. So the Dell journey at AI, AI journey at Dell has been fascinating. 
we are now squarely into year three and we are seeing impacts and I can now say with confidence that the application of AI to an enterprise can actually achieve significant material productivity enhancements that actually change the trajectory of your business. So anyway, exciting journey, looking forward to more conversations.